time for Nerdgasm. Hey, what's up guys? Jerry here, AKA Barnacles, and welcome to my new maker space, otherwise known as my garage. There's still a lot of work to go to get this thing done, but I am up and running, and this is my first official video that I'm shooting in here that isn't related to actually just building the place. Now, if you guys follow my channel, you know that I started a project to print an episode seven Stormtrooper from the new Star Wars Force Awakens movie that's coming up. If you haven't seen that video kicking off the project, I have a link in the video description. Yeah, down there. No, I'm serious, it's down there. Now, this project has been a massive undertaking between myself, a company called MyMiniFactory.com that did all of the 3D modeling on this project, specifically Lloyd Roberts, dude, you are awesome. He actually designed the entire suit by taking pictures of me and going around and generating a 3D model, which again, you'll see in that video down in the video description. But this is gonna be the first video update where we're basically taking the first parts from the suit, which I have behind me right here. I think there's 29 pieces, but we're not gonna use all 29. Some of them are duplicates that I printed just because of some defects and such, but this comprises both of the calf armors and both of the thigh armors, which we're gonna go ahead and clean up and assemble during this video. So guys, let's go ahead and kick this off. All right guys, well the material that we're gonna be using on this project is provided by ColorFab. Now this is called XT, and it's actually one of my preferred 3D printing filaments because it has a melting point up to 260 C, which shares a lot of characteristics with ABS, with the high melting point and the flexibility and pliability of the material, but it's more like PLA in the respects that it doesn't have toxic fumes when you're printing in it. It's actually quite a pleasant fume and it's incredibly durable. Also guys, I would like to thank Altimaker. They provided all of the printers that I'm using in this first video and they're responsible for printing all of the parts that make up the thigh and the calf armor that I'm about to show you in this video. Now I exclusively use the Ultimaker 2 and the new Ultimaker 2 Extended which they recently sent me because the Extended allows you to print taller models. So for instance, on the thigh pieces, you actually can print something much taller and you don't have to slice it into so many pieces which means cleanup and assembly times reduced and that's awesome. Now, because this is such a massive project, guys, it's really hard to keep track of what's printing on what, where, and to prevent duplication of work. So I went ahead and created a spreadsheet up on Google Docs. And in the spreadsheet, I basically track the settings that I'm using in the slicing software, the printer that I'm using, the amount of filament that I'm using to print each part. And that way I can track this throughout this entire project. And in each one of these update videos, I can kind of let you guys know about how much material that I'm using. So that later on, if you decide to print your own suit, you'll know. Now the guys over at Ultimaker recently came out with a new updated version of Cura. And I just wanna make it clear in this video that I am not yet upgraded in using that latest version. I'm still using 15.04 because honestly, I prefer that slicer over the new one because the new one is very buggy. Now they've assured me that they're working on those problems because there are some cool things in the new version of Cura such as their support system. The support material is severely lacking in older versions of Cura and they figured out better ways to do it. And I hope the lever that in some future prints. But for this video, guys, all of the parts behind me were printed using Cura 15.04, and you can still download that version at altimaker.com. Okay, so the first step in me creating this suit in reality is that Lloyd has to actually take the armor that he's created and segment it into parts that are small enough to print on a desktop 3D printer. Now the build volume on these desktop 3D printers can vary, but generally speaking, it's between seven to eight inches cubed build volume on most desktop 3D printers, unless you're looking at some of the cheaper under a thousand dollar printers, which have much smaller build volumes, somewhere in the five to six range. But at any rate, the piece Pieces have to be reduced in size so that each piece can be printed and then assembled into the larger pieces. Now you can imagine with a big old calf like mine, you're obviously not gonna print out the entire calf armor on one of these smaller desktop 3D printers. So what Lloyd does is he goes through and cuts the model into little cookie cutted pieces and then basically adds fittings to them for pins so that they can be aligned and pushed back together. That way I can print many small pieces and assemble them into the larger groups that become the completed pieces. And then later on down the road with a little bit of finishing work, hopefully you won't even be able to see the seams. All right, so now that Lloyd had a chance to cookie cut each one of these segments into smaller, easier, manageable parts, he usually sends them over to me in a zip archive. And when I opened up, I drag each piece 
into the Cura software. Now the Cura software is the slicer. And what that means is it's responsible for taking the 3D object and cutting it into tiny thin little layers that get stacked on top of each other to generate the 3D object. Now that of course means that I need to orient the part so that it prints the best because unfortunately here on earth we have this thing called gravity and without support some things are gonna slouch a little. Yeah, that's not a good place to say ladies, is it? So what I generally do is I flip the part around so that it's oriented best and then I add something to it called a raft. Now that raft allows for the part to print a larger base and then build off that which gives it better adhesion so that if I have a tall part when I get towards the end it doesn't run the risk of falling over or tearing off the build platform. Now with 3D printers there are a lot of little tips and tricks that'll help you get a successful print. And one of them is to use a brim, another one is to use something like glue on the heated build platform or even painter's tape to get good adhesion. Now, depending on what material you're using, there are some techniques that are better than others. But in general, for the XT, I just use a glue stick. All right, so now that we got everything sliced up, let's take it over to the 3D printer and I'll show you a couple of parts being printed out on the actual printers themselves. Hey guys, look who decided to come out and visit us in the makerspace. Say hi, Xander. Hi. <laughs> Good job. All right, buddy, daddy's gotta finish this video. These people have waited a very long time. I'm going to finish this video. <laughs> All right, so now that we have all the parts printed out for the thighs and the calves, the next step is we need to clean the parts up before we assemble them. Now, the reason for cleaning is because whenever you're printing a part that has something called an overhang, it's basically when a piece comes out that hangs over like this or at a downward angle, it requires something called support material to hold it up. It's that whole gravity thing again. Now, to give you an example, I'm gonna pull this piece and you can see I've marked it on here with RT, which stands for right thigh. And I marked every single piece just to make it easier for me to group them back together when I'm done printing. In hindsight, I probably used, should have used a little bit more of a descriptive system, but this will work. Now, just to show you right here, this is support material. See this really flimsy 3D printed material that I can just sit here and crush with my finger? This is actually the support material and it prints that way on purpose so that it easily breaks away from the part. And you can see that it's actually supporting one of the little screw holes here at the top. Now, usually you can just grab onto it and just rip it off. But as you can see, when you rip the stuff off, it does leave a little bit behind. And for that, we're gonna use a couple of tools to clean it up along with the rest of these pieces. Now, generally when I'm cleaning up a part, I like to just use some snippers. I usually use some like this. And I also have some regular little clippers. And then finally, I have something called a rasp, which is just a fancy name for a file that has varying different degrees of texture and I use this for cleaning up most of these parts. Now when we do the final fit and finish down the road we'll probably introduce some sandpaper to clean it up really nice but for now we just want to get these parts cleaned up so that we can assemble them. Also you can see here's that brim material that I was talking about earlier on the build platform and for that you basically just grab it and just break it off. Also guys another little trick that I use is anytime you're 3D printing something that has holes that have support material in them. Like you can't even see in these ones because they're so gummed up. What I like to do is just take a drill bit that just barely fits into the hole and then just work it in just a little bit to grab that material and pull it out. As you can see, that gives you a much cleaner result than trying to pick the material out using like tweezers. Now you can see I went ahead and removed most of the support material just using some basic tools. It doesn't take long. And you can see this side actually looks very clean and shiny. And I printed this at uh, actually 0.2 millimeter layer height. Now as you can see, I removed most of the support material on the back here. You can see it's a little bit of rough 
on the backside here because of all that support material and the printer actually like oozing a little bit and stuff like that. But on the front side here, you can see there was no support material used. So it's actually very, very clean and smooth. And this is the side that people are gonna see. So I'll, this is the one I'm worried about. Now for just final cleanup, I'm gonna go ahead and just take a rasp and just get some of this rough stuff off here. Now when you're filing, be careful to not file too hard or too fast because you can actually start to melt the material if you actually build up enough friction and heat. So just take your time. All right, so there you have one piece cleaned up. All of the holes are nice and clear and ready to accept pins. And the funny part is even the pins themselves are 3D printed. So that's one of the things I really admire about 3D printing is not only am I printing the panels themselves, I'm printing the hardware to assemble them back into a bigger mass. That's pretty damn cool. All right guys, well I still gotta clean up about 23 more pieces or so. So I'm gonna go ahead and just time lapse this segment and save you guys the hours and hours of agony. All right, so I finally finished the initial cleaning of all of these parts, removing the support material and all that. And you can see it's a very, very messy job. There's lots of little plastic fragments. I even have a bucket here with a ton more plastic in it. And uh, so plastic literally gets everywhere. That's another reason why I wanted to create this maker space in my garage with the epoxy floor. It just makes it a breeze to sweep all this stuff up and get rid of it. Whereas I was picking it out of my carpet for weeks when I was up in the nerd cave. So this is much better. So now that I've got all of the parts cleaned up and they're not in their final states, I got all the burrs off of them. I cleaned up the edges, cleaned out all the holes for the pins to attach. But later on, I'll still need to do the final work to make the suit look really good. And that's sanding down all the pieces and everything like that. But we'll save that for a future video. So let's go ahead and get these leg pieces assembled and see if they fit. All right, so I have three of the pieces assembled from the right thigh. Now I basically took these little pins right here and they go in these little junction points right here to hold it together. Now I did have to drill the holes out just a little bit bigger because of material shrinkage. I couldn't get everything to just fit together snugly. Uh, so I did have to modify it just a little bit, not a big deal. And now I'm just gonna put the final piece in right here, which you can see I've already drilled and put the pins in. So this little guy, let's line it up and line these two holes up over here. You can see on the back side, just lining everything up. And we're just gonna push her together. Flip it over. All right guys, well I hit a couple of snags during assembly. The biggest one was the pins. The little 3D printed pins right here were too brittle and they were a little bit too big. And as I was putting them into the alignment holes on the pieces, I was either breaking the pin or I was breaking the socket that the pin goes into. So what I decided to do instead was go ahead and print out a new batch of pins. And this time I reduced the size by 1% uh, just to allow for the material shrinkage and everything like that. And I printed them at a 0.3 millimeter layer height, 
which is much thicker than I would normally use on a detailed part because I want the strength and I want that layer, less layers adhering to each other uh, to break. And I also printed it on top of a raft instead of a brim, which makes it a little bit easier for me to break the pins off and have, them a, have a nice clean base on them. Because before with the previous method that I was using when I was breaking the pins off, they were having a little bit of lip on there that I was having to file off and it was a pain in the ass. So now that I have the new pins here, I have the two thigh pieces here for the right thigh. And you can see I've already assembled these four pieces with the pins and then I have all the pins along the top here. And then on this piece, this is the upper piece, you can see there's the receptacles on the bottoms for all those pins. So now we're gonna go ahead and try to get this all lined up and put together. Taking it nice and slow because I don't want to break anything. Man, this is a huge piece. All right, so here we have the final thigh piece assembled. Now I can see right now there was a couple little defects when I was printing this piece right here. Uh, I'm, I think I can clean those up with a Dremel, so I'm gonna go ahead and just roll with it. And then you can see there's some gaps down here because on some of the prints I actually did have it peel away from the build platform just a little bit. And I didn't think it was enough to significantly damage or misalign the part. And I've already decided at this point because there are so many little gaps between the pieces, I think I do wanna finish this armor and actually paint it and fill in all those cracks and everything with Bondo. Uh, which is something that I'm exploring right now, depending on if time will allow. But ultimately, those little pieces that we use, the pins, to align everything, I don't want to rely on those for the structural support of the piece because, again, they are kind of small and they are kind of brittle. So instead, I'm going to super glue all the seams together because super glue and ColorFab XT go together like peanut butter and jelly. And then this piece will be much more solid. But it's a long ways from being finished, but it's a hell of a start. All right, so now that we have the right thigh, let's go ahead and assemble the right calf. So here I have the four pieces that make up the right calf armor. So we'll just go ahead and put those together just like that. And then we need to go ahead and insert pins on the top. And you'll notice that there aren't any pins holding these two halves together. And that's by design because you need straps to actually hold these on your body because it's too small for you to put your foot through. And there we go. So these two halves fit together just like this and go over my calf. And guys, I went ahead and printed out the knees last night too. So now I have all of the leg pieces. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up assembly here and then we'll go ahead and see how it looks. So I finished assembly on all of the legs. You can see we have both of the thigh pieces here. We have both of the full calf armor split in half so that I can actually put something between them depending on my legs. And then I even have the little knee guards right here for the legs. So what I'm going to try to do right now is I'm going to try to find a way just to tape them up because they're not glued. I'm still got to make a couple of decisions on where I want to go with this. Uh, but I do want to see what the fitment looks like. So I'm going to try to use some tape or something to get them on my body and we'll see how this the final result looks. All right guys, well I just jerry-rigged on a belt out of duct tape and went ahead and put on the left thigh piece. And uh, it fits okay, but I noticed that I could I can't sit down. Like it immediately binds up on the back of my leg. So it feels like this part is too big. So I have a feeling that they might have uh, fudged up the model just a little bit of my body. I think it might have been a little bit taller than I actually am because this seems a little bit too big to me. Now you can see here I have the calf armor on and still I'm hanging up on the bottom of this piece. I got it pulled up as, as high as I can. I mean, it's literally like, <laughs> it's, it's in my crotch. So... They'll, they'll have to figure that out, but the calf piece looks good. I don't think the kneecap's gonna fit because my kneecap is literally right there. So again, I feel like this piece is too big, but it also barely fits my thigh in there, so I think the diameter might be a little off too. But these are the things you learn. I mean, we're doing this over the internet. They literally 3D modeled my body from a bunch of pictures. So we may have to do some modification or maybe even reprint these thigh pieces. We'll see, because if you look at the kneecap here, I mean, the kneecap, Actually, here, let me pull this piece up as high as I can right here. So the kneecap would be right there. So it would have to be up underneath. It's also very hard to bend down. This is going to be a very hard suit to move around in, but I'm going to do it. So, so yeah, the kneecap would be like that, and then this piece would probably be up a little bit higher, like that. But I'll go ahead and contact the guys at my mini factory and see what we need to do. To, to make adjustments to move forward, but I definitely think the fitment needs to change a little bit and maybe we need to do some tests before moving forward to make sure that the armor fits because as it sits right now I couldn't sit down in this armor. 
which honestly isn't that big of a deal, but at the same time, I do need a certain level of mobility. All right, guys, well, I think it's time to wrap up this first video update of the Star Wars Episode Seven Stormtrooper armor that I'm 3D printing that was designed by Lloyd Roberts at MyMiniFactory.com. Now, the suit so far looks wonderful, but I did run into a couple of problems, the first being the fitment on the thigh piece. When I put the thigh piece on and I try to sit down, I notice that it binds up on the back of my knee, so I can't quite get to a sitting position. And the second problem is I impart too much stress on the outside that I actually broke a piece off the thigh. Now the reason for that is if you look, I printed this at a 25% infill thinking that that'd be sufficient since I didn't think the armor was really going to come under any stress. But in hindsight, that wasn't a really good idea because I am a 280, you know, four-ish pound guy now and I'm moving around constantly and imparting muscle pressure. I might lean against something. So these pieces really should be printed at 100% infill. So I'm probably going to reprint the thigh pieces once we figure out the sizing the sizing issue that we're having. So I'll contact Lloyd over there, we'll get all the sizing stuff figured out, we'll take some measurements, we'll figure out where the model is inaccurate, get it fixed, get these pieces, and then keep on moving through the project. But as it stands right now, we definitely got some good data on where we're going, what we need to tweak, and what we need to do, but these pieces actually turned out beautiful. I honestly couldn't be happier with the 3D model itself. It's just a matter of getting the sizing down. So guys, I hope you really enjoy this video series. I can't wait to get the next one for you guys where I hopefully get better fitment and then start working on things like the cod piece and the chest piece and of course the helmet. The helmet's gonna be the holy grail of the whole suit because honestly, when you look at it, that is the defining characteristic that tells you Stormtrooper. I also wanna take another moment just to thank ColorFab for providing me with a massive amount of ColorFab XT filament that I'm using in my Ultimaker 3D printers. Now that filament is amazing because it has a very high melting point of 260 C, which means if you're out in the hot sun and stuff like that, you're not gonna have a problem with it softening up like PLA will. So it's more resilient like ABS and it's got some more flexibility and give to it than standard PLA. So it is a fantastic material. If you guys do anything with 3D printing, especially parts that require like stress and wear, definitely check out the ColorFab XT material. Now guys, if you want to ask me any questions about the project, come over to Twitter. I am at Barnacles. That's my social network of choice that I hang out on. Or feel free to leave comments down below on the video and let me know what you think about the project, where it's going. If you have ideas that I could relay to my mini factory, please by all means put them in the comments. But I really think that this is an awesome project and it's really demonstrating just what you can do with a desktop 3D printer. I mean, for crying out loud, everybody's like, oh, they only got a build volume of like seven by seven or eight by eight by eight. Yeah, but you can print as many of those little pieces as you want, stick them together with pins, and have some very big stuff. Hell, in theory, you could probably print a whole car. All right, guys, well, I really hope you enjoyed this video. It's time to get back to making videos. It's been a little too long, if you ask me, and I'm sure you're probably rolling your eyes and you're like, yeah, that's what I told you on Twitter. <laughs> All right, guys, let's move on to the next one. Until next time. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please take a moment and subscribe to my channel. It helps me a lot. Also come over to Twitter. I'm at Barnacles. I'm a real social guy. Also, if you have a couple of minutes, check out some of these many other videos. I made them myself. <laughs>